Hey, I'm Nagi. Today I'll show you how to make. Huh? What? What do you mean Garbaz already made a video? Let's break down all the parts of the game mechanic before we start. When the player activates the ability, an indicator appears on the ground wherever the mouse is pointing. Then, on pressing the left mouse button, a new wall of ice appears along with some awesome VFX. So, how do we recreate it? Remember in the last video when I mentioned we can get where a raycast is colliding? Well, we'll use just that and spawn a wall at the position whenever the player clicks the left mouse button. If it sounds simple to you, it actually is. In fact, the bulk of this tutorial is going to be centered around shaders. Let's start then. Starting with the FPS controller I've been using for the last couple of videos, I'll first add some actions to the input map in the project settings. One would be the action to activate the ability and one would be the left mouse button used to spawn the wall. Then, I'll create a new scene with a spatial node as its root and rename it to Ice Power. I'll add a raycast to it and rename it to Ice Ray. You don't really have to do that, but it might help you remember the function of each node in a larger project. Enable the raycast and set its direction to negative 20 along the z-axis. Next, add a spatial node to the scene root, rename it to Indicator and give it a mesh instance child. Let's set its mesh to be a box for now. Save the scene in a new folder called Ice Power and attach a script to the scene root. In the script, reference the ice ray and the indicator. In the process function, check if the ray is colliding and set the global transform.origin of the indicator to the collision point returned by the raycast. Also, call the show function of the indicator and return the function. Outside the f block, call the hide function of the indicator. This will make it so the indicator is only visible when the ray is colliding. Let's instance the ice power scene in the player's head and run the game. You'll see that the indicator is detecting all surfaces. Even the walls. Hmm. To fix that, inside the first condition check, get the collision normal from the raycast, check if the dot product of the normal and vector dot up is 1, and only then display the indicator. Additionally, set the global transform basis of the indicator to that of the owner. Ok, so now the indicator is only shown on floors. One thing that's bugging me is a slight jitter when looking around. To fix that, instead of setting the global transform origin of the indicator, let's first get the offset distance of the raycast and set the Z translation of the indicator to the negative of this value. And the indicator should now move around smoothly. Now, let's add a way to activate and deactivate the ability. Define a variable active and set it to false. In the process function, check if the ice activate action has just been pressed and set active to true. In an LF block, check if the UI cancel action has just been pressed and set active to false. Change the recast condition to only work when the ability is active. Now, we can toggle the ability on and off using C and escape respectively. Let's add another variable angle and set it to 0. Instead of setting active to true, let's set it only when it's not active, otherwise add 90 degrees to the angle. We can use the wrap i function to wrap the angle between a given range. Now where we set the basis of the indicator, let's rotate it along the up axis by the angle converted to radians. And we're done with the indicator logic. Now let's create the ice wall. Yeah, that's the best I can do right now. It's just a spatial node with a kinematic body as its child, which in turn has a collision shape and a mesh instance child, both set to roughly the indicator size. Let's save the scene and hop on over to the script. At the top, I'll load the scene file and store it in a variable called block scene. Down in the process function, right after setting the indicator to show, let's check if the left mouse button has just been pressed and call a create block function. Let's define the function down below. This function will create an instance of the block scene, add it to the owner, set its global transform origin and basis to that of the indicator, and lastly, set active to false. With that, we're basically where Garbage's tutorial ends. Ho ho ho, but we're going all the way, baby. Time to add some shaders. Hey. Hey, yeah, uh, so I was making Sage's ice wall for YouTube. Oh, cool. Yeah, can you help me with something? Yeah, sure. Awesome, so uh, I was thinking maybe you could help me with the shaders, uh, like the indicator shader and the ice block shader, and um, Hello? Hello? Starting with the indicator, I created the simple box shape in Blender with the top and bottom faces deleted. Remember to set the UV map of each face to face up. Now, remove any materials attached to the object and export it as a GLTF. Import the file in your Godot project and copy the box mesh into the ice power scene. Delete the old indicator and add a shader material to the new one. In the material, create a new shader and come over to the shader editor. Here, let's start with setting the shader type to spatial and the render mode to blend add unshaded with cull disabled. Now, let's define a uniform vector 4 called color and give it a hint color tag. Define a fragment function and set the albedo to color.rgb. Congratulations, you just made your first shader. 
You can change the color of the indicator through the inspector. Now let's add a proximity fade to make it so it fades out smoothly when clipping with other objects. I'm using this code which basically samples the depth texture, gets the world position from it, makes it suitable for use and then creates a gradient which I'm using as the alpha value clamped between 0 and 1. Make sure to define the uniform for proximity fade distance at the top and our indicator looks a bit better. The UV map is a 2D vector that goes from 0 to 1 on both X and Y axis. In our shader, if we were to multiply the alpha value with the Y value of the UV, we get this nice gradient, which looks fine but we can make it even better. Raise the value of UV.Y to the power of 16 and now our indicator looks a bit like the original. Let's make the ice block shader now. If my hours of research on Valorant footage is to be trusted, the ice block appears by dissolving in from bottom to top. The way I would achieve this is by using a clip texture. I made an ice block object in Blender along with a simple gradient that goes from black to white or say from 0 to 1. Using this, we can compare the current fragment to a given threshold and only display the fragments that match this threshold, giving us the illusion that the block is dissolving. Now, I've imported the mesh in the block scene and added a shader material to it. In the shader, let's set the render mode to blend mix with cull disabled. Now, define a uniform flow dissolve with a hint range of 0 to 1 and another uniform sampler 2D called fade texture. Load the texture in the inspector and set the value of dissolve to 0.5 for now. In the fragment function, sample the fade value from the fade texture and set the value of alpha using the step function. Make sure to set the alpha scissor to 0.1 to make the rendering order work properly. And you'll be able to make the block dissolve using a single slider. Neat. Let's make the block look good now. I painted the diffuse, roughness and normal map of the block and imported them through uniforms. Then, I sample each of them and set the corresponding values for albedo, roughness and normal map. Now for the final touch, I painted an emission map for the block. In the shader, add a couple of uniforms for the emission strength and the emission color, along with the sampler 2D for the emission map. Sample the texture and multiply it to the emission color. Then, set the emission to the value of emit multiplied by the emission strength and emit.g. I did that because it looked cool, so yeah. Now, I made another cuboid object with a UV map similar to that of the indicator and added it to the kinematic body in the block scene. This will appear inside the outer block when the block is dissolving, or whatever the opposite of dissolving is. Let's add a shader to it and set the render mode to blend add unshaded with cull disabled. Then, define a uniform for the color and another for the proximity fade. In the fragment function, copy the code for proximity fade and set the albedo to the color's RGB values. Then, let's fade the block by setting the alpha to uv.y. To flip the direction, let's subtract the uv from 1. In order to control the length of the fade, let's define a uniform cutoff with a range of 1 to 10 and multiply it with the y value of the uv. Using this, we can easily set the length of the effect. Now for the fun part, I created this texture to add some interesting shapes to the effect. All you need to do is sample the value of the texture and add it to the alpha. It sure looks nice, but we can do better. While sampling the texture, let's subtract a vector 2 from the UV with the Y value set to time. To slow it down, let's multiply time by 0.5. To add final touches, let's animate along the X axis as well using the sine function. Finally, define a uniform to control the intensity of the effect and multiply it to the alpha. For the last part of the effect, we'll create this wave thingy. Back in Blender, I duplicated the indicator object and turned it into a funnel-like shape making sure the UV does not get distorted. Similar to the ice block, I made a fade texture for the mesh. Let's create a shader for it and set the render mode to blend add, unshaded with cull disabled. Copy the code for proximity fade if you want, sample the fade texture and set it as the alpha for now. Then define a uniform offset with a range of 0 to 1 to be used to control the overall effect. In the fragment function, define a float fx cutoff and set its value using the step function giving it the value of offset and fade and set it as the alpha. We need the effect to start from the bottom, so let's subtract the value from 1. Now, let's make the fading trail. Define a float fx fade and set its value using the smooth step function. Remember, the smooth step function calculates the smooth value from a minimum, a maximum and an x value. Here, we'll set the minimum to 0, maximum to 1 and x to fade. Set this value to the alpha and you'll see that we have a smooth fade, similar to the original texture. Except here we can change the size and the offset of the fade. Add the offset to the values in the smooth step function and now we can move the fade using the offset value. Back in the shader, let's define a new uniform called fade length with a range of 0 to 1 and subtract it from the minimum and the maximum value of the smooth step function. Multiply this fade with the cutoff and we have a simple wave effect. To make the edge more visible, let's define another float and call it fx edge. This also uses the smooth step function but its start and end are the same value with the start a little bit lower. 
Let's set the alpha to the cutoff multiplied by the edge and we have a simple edge. The value is subtracted from the start in the smooth step function is actually the thickness of the edge. So we can use a uniform to control that. Now let's use the pattern texture to make the effect look more interesting. Define a float fx pattern and set its value to 1 minus the smooth step function with the start value set to offset plus 0.5, the end set to offset and the x set to fade plus pattern plus fx fade. Then set the alpha to the pattern and you'll see that it fades a little later than the other effects. Now to bring them all together, let's add fx fade, fx edge and fx pattern and multiply to the fx cutoff. Okay, this is starting to look quite good. To fix this weird issue at the top of the mesh, make good UV maps. Or do as I did and add an offset along Y to the UV. While we're at it, let's move the X by time multiplied by 0.7. Do the same for the pattern but change the values and we have a great looking effect. Hmm, I wonder what's missing. Define two uniforms for the primary and the secondary color and set their values in the inspector. In the shader, mix the two colors with the factor set to edge plus pattern and set the albedo to the color. If the color seems off, that's because this value is going beyond 0 and 1. So let's clamp it. And we're done with the shaders. Let's add the finishing touches now. I created this particle system that emits tiny quads and set its material to use this texture. Also, I made another one-shot particle system for the debris that uses a custom shard object I whipped up in Blender. Finally, we have all the parts of the effect ready. Now, to bring it all together, add an animation player node to the scene, set its process mode to physics and speed to 1.5, create a new animation and set its length to 2 seconds, Set the animation to auto load to ensure it plays automatically when the block is spawned. Now animate the parameters of the shader by adding keyframes to each of them. Also animate the kinematic body to rise from the ground and the particle systems to emit at the correct times. Once you're done, you should have all the shaders, effects and particles animating together to make the illusion of ice block forming from the ground up. Test it out in game and make tweaks to the animation or shader parameters as per your liking. And if you happen to know someone working at Riot Games, do let them know how amazing a job they've done at making those shaders. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something from it. As always, you can find the link to the project in the description. Oh, and if you want to learn more about shaders, check out Nakuto's channel for some fun and witty tutorials. Having even a basic understanding of shaders can do wonders in making your game's visuals pop. So yeah, huh? highly recommend it. Now to address the elephant in the room, I recently hit 1000 subscribers. Whoa. This is huge for me since I wasn't expecting it to happen this soon. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. I will keep on making more tutorials on game mechanics as usual along with some other things. In fact, I have a list of ideas for future videos. You can help me decide by commenting what you'd want me to teach and I'll try my best to help you out. Now remember kids. Okay. So we drink the milk and we eat the cookie. Drink the milk. Eat the cookie. Drink the milk. Eat the cookie. <sighs> okay. Eat your drink and milk your cookies. God damn.